What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. In today's video, we're talking about a developer interview from the other day with Kitase and Hamaguchi, talking about the process of creating Final Fantasy VII Remake, and they briefly talk about little bits of Remake Part 2, which can give us some ideas to speculate on what's to come in the future. This entire interview was translated and broken down by Audrey on Twitter, so be sure to follow her and check out her content because she helps us out a ton thanks to her efforts. Now with all that being said, let's get into the video. The interviewer asked, how did Remake become an actual thing? Kitase starts off by saying it was the decision made after speaking with Nomura and Hashimoto. In particular, Hashimoto mentioned he always wanted a game like Advent Children, and it became a project after much discussion. Tons of people thought that the first trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake was for another movie, but when they put the Final Fantasy VII logo and Remake title at the end, lots of people lost their minds knowing that it would be a video game. And while Hamaguchi explains how they adapted a real-time gameplay design for the remake as opposed to the original's ATB system, and how they were able to combine a command battle and action battle system seamlessly into one system, Hitase adds that they knew that fans who played the original probably wanted the nostalgic command battle system, so we tried to leave that element in there for fans with the classic mode in mind. We all know classic mode was not the greatest introduction and substitute for original Final Fantasy VII's gameplay, but they did talk about in another interview months ago that I covered that they wanted to expand on this to a better standard for players to enjoy. So fingers crossed with that one, guys. I personally love the combat system implemented with Remake Part 1, as you guys know, but I still want there to be a way for the original ATB bar system to still exist for those who don't like the new combat system. I just want a product that we all can enjoy in our own ways equally. The interviewer asked next, do you have any specific know-hows that you use to create Final Fantasy VII Remake? Kitase says it's a twofold. One, have great programmers. Two, have good communication and balance with director Nomura and co-directors Hamaguchi and Toriyama. Also, don't be a yes man to Nomura, which is some light shade being thrown at Nomura. It seems like they have a lot of fun taking jabs at each other in these interviews. Remember in the Famitsu article that Nomura and Toriyama both said that they had to stop Kitase from changing too much with the story. I really don't know who to believe to be honest, but they are putting together a good product at the end of the day. The interviewer asks, how did you decide on the game design? Hamaguchi says he joined in the middle of development. He asked Kitase and Nomura what kind of game did they want to make. Kitase said they wanted a game that used Advent Children's graphics and Nomura wanted a game that was more story driven. Hamaguchi also says that they didn't think it was necessary to create an open world for Final Fantasy VII Remake as long as it was a strong story driven game. For Midgar and Final Fantasy VII Remake, I can understand this personally because it's just the city of Midgar. The original game didn't have this as open segments to roam around with either, so we didn't get that this time around. Personally, for Remake Part 2, I don't see this being the case. Yes, the overworld for Final Fantasy VII isn't technically an open world, but I still want that overworld to exist so we can walk from town to town and come across enemies in the overworld environment and just feel the journey on a personal level walking to and from cities and different locations. If the story just moves us to the next location after we finish a chapter, then that just feels like a missed opportunity for me personally. I mean, we need that main theme playing and driving us to the next town, guys. <laughs> The interviewer asks, how was it like working with director Nomura? Hamaguchi says he was particular with the portrayal of characters. When we came up with story ideas, we ran them by Nomura to make sure it fit his vision. Kitase says he was also quite particular with the voice acting as well. Here comes the goddammit Nomura memes. <laughs> to be honest, Nomura and Toriyama said that Kitase had to be stopped from changing too much within the story, and now Kitase and Hamaguchi are saying they had to fit Nomura's vision for Remake Part 1. Altogether, it's a group effort, so who knows what was Kitase's or Nomura's ideas. But ultimately, at the end of the day, they agreed on this storyline, and if you ask me, it created a surprise for veteran fans and newcomers alike, and a product that we could all enjoy at least some of us. Kitase says another interesting part that they talked about often was where would the characters put their weapons? Where would Aerith pull out her staff from? They talked a lot about the placement of equipment and weapons. I personally love that materia are visible from character weapons. I think it's a great touch in addition to this game, to be honest. With Aerith's staff though, I always imagine she could retract it and make it smaller, similar to those tiny devices in real life where they're tiny like a little lighter and you can click it and the staff expands from it. Hamaguchi talks a little bit about the essence of time passing in Final Fantasy VII Remake compared to the original game. The original game doesn't really have a concept of time. However, when making everything realistic, we also had to think about maybe we need to let them sleep overnight. And through that, what kind of story could happen during that time? It was quite difficult. The interviewer now asks, I know you can't say much about Part 2 yet, but what's a goal for you in Remake Part 2? 
Hamaguchi says the goal for part two is to get more than 22.9% of people that watch these videos to subscribe. Guys, the PS5 giveaway is coming to an end in less than two weeks. Hit that subscribe button and get those entries in via the Gleam link in the pinned comments below. Guys, being a subscriber on the channel helps out a ton and really is a free way to support the content that you guys love so much. I appreciate every single one of you guys and I can't wait to make your 2021 better by giving you a PlayStation 5. So let's get it, baby. Hamaguchi actually says when creating Final Fantasy VII Remake, they decided to have the entire game take place in Midgar, and then they created the realistic world within Midgar. For example, in the original game, you really didn't have a sense of what it would look like to gaze up at the plate from the viewpoint of the slums, but they were able to visualize that in Remake. For part two, they want to take that level of detail and allow users to experience how they experience Midgar in the remake, but with the rest of the world of Final Fantasy VII. The interviewer then asks if he's actually referring to the world outside of Midgar, and Hamaguchi says that is correct. Unfortunately, that's all he can reveal right now about part two, which this kind of scares me somewhat because while yes, we did not get to fully explore all of Midgar like we originally thought we would, we did get an expanded look on what Midgar is and more insight on the upper plate living area somewhat. But for Remake Part 2, we actually do get to leave Midgar. But what if we get extended segments in each town and don't actually get to roam around the overworld? I hope by expanding on the world outside of Midgar, they actually give us a zone at least so we can travel from town to town. Come across enemies to grind levels, find treasure, etc. It's just a reimagination of the original game's overworld, I hope. Kitase chimes in and says, Those who played the original game probably knows what happens in the story and are curious as to what will happen now. However, because they already know the story, this gives them the opportunity to deliver them something they expect to think that is going to happen, but then surprise them and go even beyond their expectations, because the original game already exists. If they can express these elements well, it can turn into something users can definitely look forward to. They did this in part 1 too. For those who played part 1, they already have an idea of what kind of game they are making. He also says that he wants to create a game that lives up to their expectations from Remake Part 1, but also throws them off, but in a good way. To me, this just means more surprises are to be expected and to keep veteran fans on their toes since we already know where the story would be going. The interviewer also adds in that Final Fantasy XIII had a lot of set pathways, but during the later half of the game, it opens up to a large field map and he really enjoyed that aspect of it, and he hopes something like that happens for Remake Part 2. Everyone laughs and Hamaguchi says he'll take note of that. I really hope they don't wait till the end of Remake Part 2 to introduce to us the overworld. I mean, I'm getting slight anxiety here thinking about that, but even the interviewer had to let them know he enjoys open field segments rather than set pathways and hallways basically. PlayStation 2 level design, I mean come on guys. So please take note of that for real Hamaguchi because a lot of us feel that very same way. Hamaguchi says he can't say more about part 2 but there was an interesting change internally with their staff. He mentions that for part 1 majority of their staff were people who were big fans of the original Final Fantasy 7. But right now new staff members have joined and majority of them are big fans of Remake Part 1 and specifically wanted to work on a Remake Part 2 which is interesting to see the wave of newcomers in that way. Another thing that kind of worries me guys, I mean, does he mean that the original fans and team members from Remake Part 1's project left because they didn't like the direction it was going in? So they have a new staff that loves Remake Part 1 instead working on Remake Part 2? Why would he say this out loud? Oh my god. I mean, I don't know what to think about this to be honest. It's probably translated in the wrong context. I hope at least. I mean, I really don't know what to say. The interviewer says, for those people who like the original game, do they have any specific thought on development? Hamaguchi responds, a word that pops into mind is action battle. They experience a new type of action battle system and that they want to contribute to the system too. That's one thing that comes to mind when he says that. The interviewer also responds, so perhaps those staff members' thoughts might help evolve the action system. Hamaguchi says they definitely contribute ideas that allow to hopefully create new surprises to the battle system as well. Hamaguchi also mentions that the gaming industry is very unique and can sustain itself even despite COVID-19 restrictions, and it's definitely possible to work under those conditions. The interviewer asks, are there any elements you borrowed from Final Fantasy XV to put within Final Fantasy VII Remake? Hamaguchi responds, we did add personality to the Midgar slums by having it feel lived in with NPC characters talking about random topics as you walk around the areas. The team wanted to create a story driven game that immersed the player within the Final Fantasy VII world. So it wasn't really necessarily influenced by Final Fantasy XV, although Final Fantasy XV does have similar elements. Another question was, usually for video games, each team wants to one-up the previous game that came before them. Did you have any of that sentiment when making Final Fantasy VII Remake compared to Final Fantasy XV? Hamaguchi responds, We talked about dividing the story into parts earlier in this interview. Regarding that, since the original game's story, characters, and world is so vast, it's difficult to properly convey everything in the remake. 
If we want to tell the entire story, we have to do it in parts. However, if we were to make Remake one game, there might be some parts that feel like they're missing something or are being spread way too thin. So in order to avoid this, since the remake will be divided, we are able to focus on each part and make it even better than how it was portrayed in the original Final Fantasy VII game, which makes for a completely new gaming experience. For me, I'm all for extra immersion with NPCs in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I thought the whole dialogue aspect was super interesting, and I found myself often listening in to what other NPCs had to say for quite some time. And it's funny that the interviewer would ask if they felt like they had to one-up Final Fantasy XV, when I mean, we're talking about Final Fantasy VII. That is Square's most valuable project to date, and in my opinion, will always surpass Final Fantasy XV. But of course, with Final Fantasy XV, Final Fantasy VII Remake's battle system would not have been so fine-tuned. So there is another good thing about Final Fantasy XV, if you think about it, technically. Their closing statements encourage those who are interested in the game development industry to follow their passion and a bunch of other positive reinforcements. And that's the end of the interview, guys. Definitely some interesting things to take away from this, although they were very vague on the status and things revolving around Remake Part 2 because it's still pretty early in development for the most part. I can't help but worry that maybe we won't get an overworld like we had in the original game. But Hamaguchi saying he'll take note of the interviewer's request of an overworld like that in the later portion of Final Fantasy XIII is very good and reassuring somewhat, I hope. Maybe the first 50 hours or so will be linear and then the last 5 hours will have access to the overworld and are able to travel around just like in Final Fantasy XIII and various other RPGs that do the same thing. February 13th, there is a Final Fantasy VII themed orchestra in Tokyo. They also announced that Kitase will be presenting a video during that event but did not elaborate further on what that could be. My fingers are crossed that it just might be an announcement for the definitive edition of Final Fantasy VII Remake. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. Some interesting stuff nonetheless, but more questions are being raised up for the future. In the upcoming weeks, we just might get some information and updates about the next-gen version of Remake Part 1. I personally am excited for a PC release, and I can't wait to see what things are included with all of that. Get your PlayStation 5 giveaway entries in there, guys. The giveaway is coming to an end soon, and the winner will be chosen in less than two weeks, so you don't want to miss out on that. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake videos are coming your way, and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz, and thanks for watching.